Hi, this is David Gawley from Pentagon Solutions and I would like to take a very brief look at getting started in AutoCAD 2012. Uh, this is the AutoCAD interface that I have on the screen. It says AutoCAD Architecture, but I've started it just as a plain AutoCAD. And one of the first things I'd like to explain is workspaces. Um, and what workspaces actually do is control your working environment. We've got lots of different types of AutoCAD users in here and you can see that AutoCAD now uses the ribbon interface and by default that's the default workspace. Um, we have classic um, workspaces in here where we can actually swap out the classic view and it'll bring in my toolbars which is a way to access my commands or I can bring in um, my physical pull downs. So that's for a more traditional CAD user. Uh, we have another uh, workspace called 3D Basics where it will take you out into your ribbon and your tool palette and again you can actually see it will gain access to all your 3D commands. What I would recommend for a new user is get used to the ribbon interface and pop it out to drafting and annotation. Because um, the ribbon interface is incorporated in many products and Microsoft products and it's easier and more intuitive to get used to. If you want to bring in your menu bar what you can do is click on the down key here on your quick access toolbar and you can say show menu bar. So if you want to save that for your own workspace very simply all you do is go save current as. I'm going to call this Pentagon. I'm going to hit save and now I have my own individual workspace. So if I ever lose my way, if I ever say go into my 3D one by mistake, I can simply go back to my Pentagon one. So it's changed my interface and go back in and again I'll pop in my Pentagon one and it has my pull down menus. Um, a wee bit more in the interface, so we have the ribbon, we have our pull down menus in here, so these are ways to access commands. Um, we have our quick access toolbar which we can customise in the wee down key here. We can add in common commands. Um, we have our menu browser in here, so if we click on the A. Um, and the menu browser is great because we can push pin drawings. So say we have common drawings that we need to access and we can push pin them in there. We can also access some common commands. Um, but the great thing about it is we can actually search. If I'm looking for a command like line, I can simply type it in and it will go and tell me where the command's um, located. Not only that, if I actually click on it, it will access the command. So it actually takes me to the line command and actually allows me to start drawing. So I'm just going to hit and undo on that. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a very, very simple shape. I'm going to show you the power of AutoCAD because I'm only going to draw one object and most of the, um, all the remainder of the editing is just going to be using the modify commands. So Again, a simple shape, it's only going to take a couple of minutes. Uh, good practice in AutoCAD is the setup layer. Um, so what layers do is they add structure to your drawing um, because drawings are complicated. They could be an architectural plan um, with walls, doors and windows etc. or a structural plan and you want to break out your drawing into layers. So I'm going to go into layer properties. I'm simply going to create a new layer. So I'm going to click on the new layer and I'm going to call this part. And I'm going to change the colour of the layer and we can change the line type etc. in there. I'm just going to hit OK. I want it to be current. And what I can actually do is go back into my layer manager and I can double click on the corner here in part and I get the little checkbox to say, yep, this is the current layer. Um, the other thing we can do is we can swap between it here. There is a default layer called layer zero. It's not good practice to draw on that layer. Um, do define your own layers and do set these up in your template. So as I said, I'm going to take a simple part in here and I'm going to draw a circle. And I've got lots of different options for circles and the most common one is center and radius. So what I'm going to do is pick center and radius and you can see I have my command line at the bottom. My command line is giving me advice on what to do. So it's saying specify the start point, so I can pick a start point. Um, at this point I can actually type in um, my radius. So I'm going to say let's give this a radius of 50, 50 mil. Um, we've got zoom controls where we can use the scroll mouse wherever we focus the cursor. It'll scroll in and out on that object. Um, if we double click the scroll mouse, it'll zoom extends. So we can scroll in and out. It's very easy to navigate. Um, we have various controls along the bottom as well um, for the likes of our grid and snap. More traditional users might want to right click here and maybe take off um, the use icons because they're more used to this kind of interface. But you can use it, um, function keys as well. But rather than overcomplicating it, I'm just going to simply take grid. So you can see grid's your guidance there. We'll take that on or off.
So a simple circle, it's a radius of 50 mil. So I want to offset that 25 mil. Um, again, I could create another circle, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the offset command. So we have our modify commands up here. We can use a wee push pin to actually um, lock that into position. And um, we can go and look for the command that we physically want to use. Um, we can also do this for the likes of draw. We can push pin um, our physical commands in there um, before we're going to use them. Um, so I'm simply going to go to the offset. So offsets there. Again, you'll get a tooltip if you hover over it. And if you read the command line, it's asking for the distance. So I'm going to type in 25 and hit enter. What it's asking now is to pick the object. You pick the object up, click on it, and then the side. Well, I want the offset to the inside, so I'm going to left click. It still stays in the offset command, so I'm going to hit the escape key to actually escape out of the command. So we've created one circle, and we've offset it um, in 25 mil. So we've got 50 mil radius circle, offset in 25 mil. Um, what I'm going to do is use the copy command. I want to copy this out 200 mil. So I'm going to go to copy. And with copy, it's asking me to select objects. Now, in AutoCAD, you've got lots of different selection methods in here. You can simply pick on it, but we also have what's called crossing windows and windows. So as a hint in here, if I'm going from left to right, the window turns blue. Blue simply means all objects that are physically contained within the boundary will be picked up. Okay, so you can see that there. So all objects physically contained within it. Um, I can't pick that object anymore up, you know, it's ready selected on the screen. And um, there is a green uh, window if you're going from right to left, and that's objects that actually physically touch the crossing window. Um, but that's again for another video. So I've selected my objects, I'm going to hit enter. It's asking for a base point, so I'm going to use my snap tools, object snap to snap to the center of the circle. I'm going to click, and I'm just going to simply pull out. Now, if I want to get this straight, um, I can hold down my shift key as a temporary override, or I can put on my ortho. So ortho simply means whatever direction I'm dragging it, it is straight, north, south, east, west. I simply type in the value, so I'm going to type in 200, and hit enter still stays in the command so I can hit escape to cancel it. So I've copied those two circles out. Say if I actually wanted to add an arc between those. Rather than draw the arc, I'm going to use the fillet command. So I'm going to say let's fill it. So fillet's on the modify toolbar. And as an option in here, I want to add in my radius. So I can either type it in the command line or I can right click and go to radius rather than type in an R for radius. And I'm going to specify a radius of 400 mil. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I simply pick the top of my circle. And I pick the top of the adjacent circle. I can see this and um, put in my radius 400 mil. I can go back into the command again by simply hitting enter. And that remembers the last command. I don't need to set the radius up again to remember those parameters. So I can click my circle and click my circle. Okay, so that's been created from one circle and I've been using the remainder of the um, modify commands in there. What I'm going to have a look at now is trim. Nice feature I like about trim. If I go to pick trim up, I like to analyze everything as a cutting boundary. So I simply hit enter. It analyzes all objects that cross as a cutting boundary. So it means I can use my crossing window just to sneak across. Remember going from right to left, pick up the objects I physically want to remove and then I can hit enter. Um, again, if I want to change the shape or if I want to do a rotation on it, I, um, I simply could do that. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use my rotate command. So I'm going to click on rotate. Um, it'll ask me to pick up my objects. So again, I can use my selection window and I can hit enter. And again, we can specify a base point. So I can click on this point. Now the interesting thing about the rotate is, again, I've got my ortho on here. I can specify an angle, but I can still come down to the bottom of the screen and just leave it freehand in there. So I could specify a specific angle to put in at, say like 45 degrees. But the other option I have is on the right click, I can go to copy, because I want to create a copy as I'm rotating. So I'm just gonna leave my angle as freehand 
and left click and it's physically made a copy of it. Um, another option I have here in the modify command is I can physically do a stretch. So I can stretch an object. Again, I can stretch this by using a crossing window. So I'm going to pick just near midway here and left click, pick up. And then I'm just going to hit enter. And what we do is we pick a base point. So say if I pick my base point here and left click, I can stretch my object out. Now it is stretching my arc. So I maybe have to redefine the radius in there. But for this instance, for a simple tutorial, I'm happy. And I'm just going to put my ortho on at the bottom. So you can see how it's intuitive and inter interacts with the ortho at the bottom of the command line. And simply stretch across. Um, so we've created a custom shape. And we've simply done this from one um, draw command. We've only used the circle command. We used the circle. Then we used the mo remaining all, or some modified commands. We used offset. Then we use copy, then we use fillet, um, and then we use rotate with copy and stretch to create the remainder of the objects. So bear in mind when you're using AutoCAD and you're actually creating objects, you'll probably use your modify commands as much as your usual draw commands. Thanks for listening.